Alright, welcome to another explained video. We are going to look at the 2006 HSE paper, question 22, not 20, sorry. A balance was used to investigate the relationship between current and false. The balance was set up with one copper rod fixed to it and a second rod fixed above it, as shown in the diagram. Each rod was connected to a source of current. The diagram is not to scale. The copper rods were rigid, each was 2.6 meters long, and they are parallel. The current in the upper rod was kept constant at 50 amps. Different currents were passed through the lower rod, and the balance reading recorded for each current. The readings are given in the table below. Okay, so that's what we have. Question A. Identify the relative direction of the currents in both rods and justify your answer. Okay, well, what we see here is it's a parallel circuit, okay? So if it's a parallel circuit, the currents are always going to be moving in the same direction, right? Reason being, if we kind of imagine a electric circuit, we're not going to really draw any light bulbs or anything because this is just for, you know, imagination. We have the current going through here and then a the current goes through here. When it goes into the first terminal or first component, it goes like that. In a parallel circuit, if it goes to a second pathway, it's a new pathway in total. So they're actually going in the same direction when they're parallel to each other. You might ask, well, what about this bit here? It's the opposite. Yes, that's true, but this is in series to each other. This part and this part are parallel to each other. So that's what we have here. So let's just write that down. So the current is moving in the same direction. As the circuit is in parallel. or each other. Okay, so that's the first part done. It says plot the data from the table onto the graph using the scales and axes as indicated and add the line of best fit. Okay, this might take a while. Um, so the current in the lower rod, 2.8, and balance reading there. Might just have to open this up in my other on my other laptop, just so we can see it through. Okay, I have the data up. Let's graph it out. So when we have a current of 2.8, so around this point here, um, our balance reading is 0.5485. So around here, we start uh, around at that mark there, okay? At a current in the low rod of 8 amps, our reading is around 0 0.548, okay? Uh, at around 12.2, um, our balance reading is around 54.74, so around just a bit below about here, okay? Um, at 16.8, it's 0 0.547, so around about here. Um, and at 20, it's about 0 0.5465. Okay, so there's that, and we add a line of best fit. Now, remember the line of best fit is a straight line in this case uh, through the dot. So we're trying to see um, a trend. So if I don't have a ruler with me, which you really should when you do this, the line kind of goes through like that. It's not 
perfectly straight, but that kind of illustrates the line of best fit here. Okay, and I will just kind of jot it all the way through. Okay, so question C says, find the mass of the rod on the balance. Now, the best way we're going to work this out, as you can see, um, as the current is increasing, our mass is decreasing, or at least the weight we record is decreasing. So there's a force in this situation. What's actually happening, the reason why it's getting lower is because as they attract to each other, so this is attracted up, this is attracted down, this is pulling this rod here upwards. Okay, so that's why it gets lighter on the scale, or gets smaller on the scale. Which means when we have zero current, that's when we find its uh, actual mass, which is this point here. So according to my diagram, or my line of best fit, that should be approximately 0 0.54, probably 1, 9, 1 kg. Okay. The last one we have is calculate the distance between the two copper rods. All right. So let's try and look at all the information that we have at the moment. Okay. So if we have a look, this is probably another scenario where you have to use um, equate the forces together. So the form we're going to use is FL over length. So the question is, what is the force? Now, the force we're going to look at is when there is uh, zero forces of attraction. So no magnetic force of attraction between the two rods. We're going to simply look at what gravity is doing at this point here. Okay, so the force exerted at that particular point. We do know what the mass is. Um, it's given, or we just worked it out. Uh, and we have the current uh, provided as well. Okay, so let's have a look. According to this formula, so that k, which k is just mu naught over 2 pi, so that's that bit there, times current 1, current 2 over distance of separation. Okay. The length of the rod is 2.6. So the length is So we know the force is 0 0.003 newtons. Um, we already know what the K constant is. You can find that on your data sheet. That's two times 10 to the power of minus seven. Current one is 50 amps. Current two is 24 amps. And we are trying to find the radius. So what you need to now do is to make the radius the subject of the equation and your force uh, divided by length, that needs to be moved to the right-hand side. So now that I've rearranged the equation with r as a subject, I can now substitute the values into my equation. So just writing it down here. Okay. Now once you do that, just substitute it or yeah, substitute it into your calculator and uh, we'll see what we get from there.
So the value I get is 0 0.0208 meters, and that is the radius. Thank you very much for listening up to this point. If you find videos like these explaining exam questions useful to your understanding on HSC physics, uh, please give this a like, subscribe if you haven't done so already, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.